Hello everyone, it's Vivi here, and in this video I will be showing you how to make this card, but especially how I use watercolor pencils to add colors to the images. And I'm also going to be making this coordinating envelope. And today I will be using this beautiful stamp set by Simon's Says Stamp. It has 13 individual stamps and it's good to apply a wide variety of card making techniques. And I'm going to be using this stamp here and this one. And to make the envelope, I will be using Sending Flowers stamp set by Simon Says Stamp. This is a stamp designed to make envelopes, but you can also use it to make cards and a wide variety of projects as well. I love it. I will be showing you some samples of cards made with this stamp set at the end of the video. And I'm going to be using these watercolor pencils. You can also get a smaller packs of these watercolor pencils on the Simon Says Stamp Shop. And all the links are in the video description. And I'm also going to be using this Distress Ink. It's called Antique Lining. And this is the ink I'm going to use to start stamping. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab two post-it notes and I'm going to paste them together, one on top of the other, and I'm going to stamp. Once I have my image stamped, I'm going to cut the image just like I'm doing here so that I get two masks in one go. I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper. This is a quarter of an A4 sheet of watercolor paper and it's 300 grams cold pressed, but you can use any you have available because uh, we are not going to use a lot of water today. So I'm going to stamp the flower as straight as possible, like so. And once it's stamped, I'm going to use the mask to put it on top like that and I'm going to stamp the next flower, like so. And then I'm going to use the other mask, I'm going to put it on top and I'm going to keep stamping. Okay, so once I have my flowers stamped, I'm going to stamp the stems or the leaves. So I'm going to use this stamp here and I'm going to try to place it this way so the flower is going to just match with those stems or those leaves. And I'm going to stamp like that. And here I'm going to stamp with the other portion of the stamp. Don't worry if your images are not completely aligned with the end of the cardstock here. You can always trim the cardstock or you can stretch those lines using watercolor pencils. Or you can also, of course, stamp the images a little bit lower than I did. I'm just going to trim it just to keep it simple. Okay, so once I have all my images stamped, I'm going to start applying color. And because these images are very small, I'm going to be using a water brush with a very fine tip, which is this Nubo Aqua brush here. And I'm going to be using three shades of color. This is a blue, a purple or a kind of purple color and also a hot pink or a fuchsia. I will be listing the name of these colors in my blog post. They have some names that I cannot um, say in English. So I want to make sure that you know which are these colors and um, you can find the link to my blog post in the video description. Okay, so I'm going to start applying color. My paper or my watercolor paper is completely dry and so the tip of my pencil. This is my blue pencil, so I'm going to start by adding some lines of the pencil there and then I'm going to grab the purple color and I'm going to add a couple of lines at the edges of the flower, just like that, very gentle in the color application. And then I'm going to grab the water brush and I'm going to blend these colors together like so. And when I reach more or less the center of the petal, I'm going to stop, I'm going to clean my brush, and I'm going to come with a clean brush, and I'm going to try to spread that pigment on the rest of the petal, like so. By getting the edges wet, the Distress Ink is also going to reactivate and it's going to grab those pigments as well. And it's going to look a little bit purple. So it's kind of cool and super easy. And now I'm going to do exactly the same with the rest of the petals. And I'm going to speed the camera a little bit so you don't have to see the whole thing over and over. <music> And when the brush 
is too saturated of the color, I just grab a piece of kitchen paper and I clean it and I go over the petal with just clear water. If you feel that your petals are looking too flat, you can grab the water brush and make circles like I'm doing here so that it will lift the pigmentation there and you are going to get a lighter area. That is going to give a little bit of volume to that petal. Now I want to show you something. I'm applying just the blue pencil in this little petal here and I'm going to use the water brush so that I get just pure blue, okay? If I want to blend this now and I grab my purple pencil and I try to apply the pencil on that wet area, it's wet because I use the water brush there, I'm going to get a very, very dark stain of color. I don't know how to say that properly in English, but the results are completely different when you work with watercolor pencils on wet. And I have to say that I don't really like to work with watercolor pencils on a wet watercolor paper. And the reason for that is because you will struggle blending the color and getting a nice effect with the color. You can fix that, of course, because the watercolor techniques are very forgiving, but why making the things a little bit more challenging when it's easy? So my proposal to you in this video is just working on dry watercolor paper, then applying the colors you want to blend, and then applying water. Now I'm going to speed the camera and play some music so you can see how I finish this flower and I'm also going to add color to the other flowers, some shadows and contrast. I'm also going to jump here because I want to show you how I add color to these leaves here. I use yellow, a blue color, a green, and also a dark blue. And I'm going to blend this together like so. And I'm going to move the brush up and down, up and down, until the colors blend together. Or until they kind of blend, but not completely. So I also achieve a different look in those leaves. And I keep going, just applying color to the petals. Once I finish applying the first layer of color on the flowers, I'm going to start adding details. I know the flowers are looking a little bit ugly in this stage, but once you apply another layer of color and you play with the color around a little bit, they are going to change. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm using now a dark blue and a violet color. I don't have those shades in my Derwin palette, so I'm using some watercolor pencils that haven't been released to the market. But once they are available, I will tell you because these watercolor pencils are amazing. So I'm not allowed to speak too much about them right now. I'm so sorry about that. I was hoping that for today I could speak about them, but no, it's not possible. So once I have the color down, I just use the water brush and I try to spread that out and try to make the things a little bit more even. I also add lights with the pink shade or the fuchsia, like so. I keep going and playing with the color until I feel that I like a little bit more. You know, this is a thing of playing around. Then I start adding color to the other leaves, like so. And I think this is the easiest part, applying the color to the leaves, and I really like this. You can also apply colors in this way to add colors to the petals, and you will get some amazing coloring as well. I will show you that later. And if you need to add some leaves, you can create your own as well. It doesn't have to be stamped always. So that's what I'm doing here, just to try to make that image to look with a little bit more of sense. So I just draw a line here like that with three different colors, then I blend them. And that's it, kind of finishing this. And just to show you also how I add a background, for this uh, card. I was thinking just leaving it white, but I decided to add a little bit of color 
to that background. So apologize because when I was editing the video, I realized that a huge chunk of information wasn't there. So I have to repeat the coloring of the background in everything you have seen so far in the video, but that was okay. I finished these two cards here and I also made this one. And what I did was gluing down the panel on a black hard base. And I also add a die cut work from a beautiful stamp and die from Hero Art. So every time you do this, it's going to look completely different. You can add different textures as well. So this is me next day. I finish uh, the coloring and I'm going to use Broken China Distress Oxide Ink to add color to this background. So I'm going to apply the ink with a briar like so. I'm not applying any pressure and I'm not willing to apply the ink perfectly or evenly. So it's just a hint of ink here and there. I'm going to clean the glass mat and I'm going to use another briar to apply a different shade of color. I'm going to be using Warm Lipstick Distress Ink. This is not oxide, this is a normal traditional distress ink. And I'm just going to apply a hint of color here, just a little bit, just like that. With the other inky briar, I just try to pull those seams together, but I'm not doing a great effort to do that. Now I'm going to bring a little bit of water and I'm going to splatter the watercolor paper with it, like so. And don't be scared to add a lot of water. Something great about working with watercolor pencils is that they do not bleed as easy after they are settled on the cardstock or the paper. If you were using another kind of water-based paints or inks, you will have to pay special attention because the inks are going to start bleeding and distressing. I also like to add little white dots or um, kind of small lines on the flowers. That gives a little bit of detail there that you barely can see, but it's there. Okay, so I have to come back and grab another card, completely different. I use another inks here for the background. As the camera stopped recording sometimes here and there, what I did was join together everything to be able to make one single video. So I'm applying here the ink of a black Nubo Aquaflow paint and I'm mixing it with water on a clear block. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of that ink and I'm going to start splattering the ink like so. You need to make sure that any ink on that panel is completely dry before doing this. Because if not, as this is a water-based pigment, it's going to blend with any wet ink there and it's going to create a kind of mess, a gray mess, because it happens once and I was like, no, what happened to me today? Anyway, there are some days in which the things just go straight forward and some others in which you have to put a little bit more of effort, but that's fine. It's not a huge effort to get the things done. So I'm going to use a Stampin' Up white embossing powder and clear Versamar ink to stamp this banner. I really like this embossing powder to stamp a small fonts or sentiments, it really provides a very delicate and fine image. I have uh, stamped the sentiment with another embossing powder. If you see here, you will think that that might be similar, but they are not the same. Stamping at the top is more smooth and the sentiment looks more sharp. So I'm going to trim the banner and I'm going to paste it on the front panel of my card. And I'm also going to use some sequins by Lucy Little Things. And once I finish, I just paste the panel on a card base. This is a C6 or A6 card base. And that's the card. I'm so sorry because I feel the video is a little bit long, but I want to show you some details that might be important if you are learning car making. So now I'm going to show you how to make the envelope. I'm going to take one minute to do that. To stamp the envelope, I'm going to grab this stamp from Sending Flowers Stamp Set by Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to use this ink, which is a new hybrid ink by Tonic Studios. This is a green color. You can use any color you want. And I'm going to place a piece of paper underneath the envelope just because I don't want any ink on the glass mat to transfer in the front of my envelope. So I'm going to start stamping 
and I'm going to ink the stamp once and then I'm going to go and stamp as many times until the stamp doesn't have any more ink and then I'm going to re-ink the stamp again and I'm going to do the same process over and over. Then I'm just going to stamp one of the sentiments in the set and I'm going to proceed to stamp some florals as well. From there, you can create different appearance for these envelopes. You can create a more vintage look by using some distress ink, or you can stamp the envelope as well in different colors. I have some extra ideas I want to share with you, made with the stamps I'm showing in this video, and also mixing these two sets with other stamp sets. So that's all for today. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. Let me know what do you think about this project if somehow I give you an extra idea for your paper craft projects. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye!